Welcome back to Fire Emblem Echoes Shadows of Valentia. Last time, Alm got a bit distracted because a witch showed him a vision of Selka being in danger, but Selka's just fine. She might be less fine heading into the mire. There's a skirmish here. <laughs> just a normal skirmish, though. It does, however, start with a very good cutscene. What's this? The way you said the mire, it sounded like you forgot where oh, Frodo and Sam live. Oh, seriously? How are you not used to this by now? If you've seen one ghoul-ridden deathscape, you've seen them all. I suppose you have something of a point. Fine. Let's press on. Yeah, I've seen this background a few times. It's fine. Actually, it looks like this place is full of necro-dragons. Since that's new. <laughs> I love that cutscene so much. I've been waiting for that one. <laughs> it's kind of hard to remember exactly where it is because it is a cutscene about being in the graveyard for the umpteenth time. So I wasn't quite sure where it was, but here it is. This one's full of dragons, though. It is full of dragons, but I actually like this uh, particular bit of design uh, because this chapter is bait. Or I keep calling them chapters. <laughs> the rest of the series has given me issues here. Uh, but anyway, yes, uh, we have a whole lot of dragons, but this map is here to teach you that, hey, actually, Necro Dragons aren't too bad, and also, holy shit, Atlas. Best level up he's had. Uh, so yes. <laughs> Protect Atlas, make sure he doesn't die after that level. So, this map is here to make sure, you know, if you hadn't checked in recently, that Necro Dragons aren't so bad. We've had a few maps with them here and there, but you might have skipped the Dragon Shrine, that's entirely possible. I did actually Christ want to have Leon. Kamui come in and uh, do something there, because, you know, his whole thing was that he was afraid of the Necro Dragon, so I was gonna, you know, have him come in and slash the, the Necro Dragon to death, but then Leon said, no. No, I'll be taking that kill. Oh, you want Kamui to do something cool? I'll, I'll, I'll fix that. <laughs> Don't worry, Leon's here. Yeah, since it's entirely possible that you might have skipped a few Necro Dragons, and in fact, I don't think there's actually been a required Necro Dragon on the path, has there? Because Sea Shrine had Necro Dragons, but you can skip Sea Shrine if you want. Yeah, I think you're right. I think up to this point, every dragon's Honestly, been optional. I was pretty much perfect back there. So yeah, it's probably here to show that necro dragons aren't scary. Uh, but if you haven't fought them before, first off, you're probably down a few levels. But second off, here are necro dragons. They're not so bad at this point in the game. We've got a bunch of them on the same map, but you can actually take care of them pretty handily at this point. And now, the actual map of this episode. It's Dolt's Keep. Alright, so no intro before you set up, but that means before anybody talks to us, we can take a look at this map, and yeah, no. This is why Necro Dragons were introduced as not as scary in the previous map, because now they're just kind of here, and this man summons them. <laughs> he is very intense. How did you make that laugh with that face? You've got your teeth gritted to hell and back. I see you've reached my fortress. We produce but this unidentifiable liquid. This way, your highness. Don't mind me doing this thing, Rero Rero Rero. I will let you lay a finger on Celica. Most of these portraits for Dolph look like he's mid-sneeze. The jaws of my necro dragons will silence your interruptions. Just had a real unpleasant sneeze. Alright, well, I am however glad to see that he's on the floor though. Uh, I was worried that they got my doll on the ceiling. But, uh, nope, here he is. Okay, so this chapter, this chapter. Well, first off, Atlas, doing pretty good there, buddy. I actually managed to double something to death, so good on ya. He's finally catching up with the rest of the group after I left him as a villager for far too long. 
Okay, so yeah, this one's tricky. Um, so your first inclination without the Necro Dragons would probably be to send your Pegasus Knights in, glide over the fort walls, and just assassinate those archers before they can be a problem. But they're Necro Dragons, and while they're less scary for the entire army, uh, together, not so much. They're actually still pretty scary for just the Pegasus Knights we have. They take a significant effort. Uh, worse off as well, of course, is the bog that we have to traverse. That is now incredibly dangerous. In the previous map, you could actually turtle very well. Necro Dragons get pretty good range over a battlefield. They can kind of just go wherever, because they can manage to fly on those wings. But it still wasn't too bad of... Uh, as long as you put a little thought into where you were going and maybe protected units uh, just by forming a shield around them, it wasn't a big deal that they could go anywhere. Here, yeah, no, you're being buffeted by arrows and dragons at the same time. It's a bit tricky, actually. So, I keep getting distracted by the, the liquid in this swamp. Because I, I can't decide if it's red or brown. So I can't decide if it's supposed to be blood or if it's just poop. <laughs> it's bog, that's all it needs to be. Is this it doesn't the poop need to be fort? gross. Are we invading poop fort? I refuse to answer this question. You, you wouldn't believe how much these Necro Dragons shit. All right. Oh god, everybody's getting sta <laughs> stabbed by the water. Oh god. <laughs> yeah, so here's the part where I was like, I could go in and attack those guys, but dragons, though. <laughs> <laughs> Gotta deal with the dragons. So yes, like I've been saying, last one was a warm-up. <laughs> you got used to dragons, and now they're just a regular unit. See this? This is a proper introduction to units. None of that one horse on a field thing, and then seven horses on a field. No, this, this is... Dragon's introduced pretty early on, and is more or less used as a boss. And now we're getting them just shoved in our faces. Ooh boy. Maneuvering in swamps. Yep, so... Obviously, taking damage sucks, but also, not being able to move my units as forward as they could get is, um, also bad, I will say. Lack of mobility means that I have to kind of use up my flyer turn here, because nobody else can get to the enemy in time. Dreadfighters are great, however, they are chained by their feet. They can do no better than most can. And now I have to step into archer range to kill these dragons. How dare they strategize! <laughs> and that's still not all of them, so I prioritize the dragon I could definitely kill. Though it is Katria, so like... I don't know, she would have crit. I should really believe in her more often. You probably had that other one. Mm-hmm. That being said, off the top of my head, I don't actually know how aggressive Necro Dragons are in terms of their AI. Mainly because, on average, I just try to kill them. I don't want them to be alive. I mean, dragons are pretty aggressive, zombies are pretty aggressive. I think zombie dragons would just be super aggressive. These are... Piss poor damage numbers. Yep. I keep forgetting not every archer is a, a Pegasus killer in this game. Yeah. It is a huge relief. Uh, they traded most enemies having that advantage in normal mode for archers being able to attack close range. Whether that's a worthy trade-off is up to you, but... Uh, well, it did work out for them there. This game also 
gives the archers just ridiculous range. That would make it even more difficult to deal with, because they can shoot across the map and KO your Pegasus Knights in one turn. <laughs> mm-hmm. Again, uh, I'm certain that there are more uh, enemy archers with Pegasus killing bows uh, if you're playing harder modes, but that's not a thing I have to worry about, so uh, neener neener, I guess. But yeah, these are snipers, meaning they do have pretty good range. But, advantage, they're not bow knights. We've seen a couple of those here and there. Uh, certainly don't have any for ourselves, but... It would suck if they were here, because... Not only do they have good range, they also have a horse. Alright, and that's Necker Dragons for now, but of course, more can always be summoned. The Necker Dragons keep coming, and they don't stop coming. And they don't stop coming, and they don't stop coming. Once the Necker Dragons are mass produced, we'll be unstoppable. Easily stop the mass produced Necker Dragons. Whoa, 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 what the hell's happening? You were supposed to hit the ground run! Sir, the Necro Dragons say that it doesn't make sense not to live for a fun. <laughs> They're also added that uh, our brains get smart but our heads get dumb. I don't really understand what that means. I'm just gonna go shoot that Pegasus. Who gave the Necro Dragons the Shrek OST? <laughs> <laughs> don't fear Necro Dragons, you're very, very poorly raised. I mean, it's not the worst thing they could be watching, but they're so young, I think. Most of them were born today. Look, I only keep movies about swamps in my keep. It's fitting, okay? <laughs> I relate. I understand Shrek's plight of not wanting people to go to his swamp. I too would love nothing more than for nobody to be here. <laughs> and he looks all his soldiers dead in the eyes individually. <laughs> now we're getting shot to death, and my dragons are dying by the dozens. <laughs> Today sucks. <laughs> Shrek never prepared me for this. Oh, Shrek, we're really in for it now. <laughs> Dolph doesn't have orange panels, he just has a poster of Shrek. <laughs> and this is the part that sucked because I had to retreat because... who oh boy, there be dragons. <laughs> I want to kill these guys, but dragons, though. I guess this just flew over the wall, then immediately flew back. <laughs> <laughs> Don't know what's scary in here. Keeps haunted. What? Keeps haunted. Okay, but the question is, which character would it be the funniest to have them say that? Hmm. I would say Catria. I was leaning towards Catria, yeah. Keeps haunted. What was that? Keeps haunted. You wanna elaborate? <laughs> she just flies away. Est, you keep badgering me to buy a gun? Well, I need one. Behold, the saddest archer fight ever conceived. What are these footstep noises? Uh, they have armored booties. It sounds like they're banging around in like an air duct. Atlas? Atlas? It's fine. <laughs> 
See, it's fine. <laughs> yes, I was absolutely panicking at this point, <laughs> but Atlas pulled through. He did it. The boy has finally arrived. They can just regret mocking him so much. <laughs> this never would have happened if he were a cavalier. I feel like it'd be even worse somehow if, this, if he were a cavalier. <laughs> I can confirm that. I, I made him a cavalier. In my first run, it... Yeah, no, he was just kind of mediocre for the whole thing. Rarely do I... Oh! <laughs> rarely do I ever have uh, underperforming units that are that bad in the Fire Emblem, but he managed. Anyway, yeah, this is the first time I'm using Sagitte. Uh, <laughs> it's a male-only spell for some reason, but it is one of their stronger spells. Uh, it's got good range with three range, and it's just an aura aura, but with magic. It's just a machine gun. <laughs> I cast a Maiwomo Sinderu. Fuck this up, Jesse. You, you did it. You performed. You want to know how? You performed. That's all you need to know. Okay. You didn't perform well. You just performed. <laughs> Alright, yeah, now definitely have to heal first because... Look, Atlas excels when he is able to use his skills, and he's dying, so he can't. <laughs> if he pulled that string back any farther or with any more force, he would die. Atlas, get your shit together. <laughs> Don't worry, Leon's here. <laughs> if somebody needs to be shown up, Leon's on the scene. You didn't actually kind of look like Leon. <laughs> Can we just teleporting all over the area? Nothing. Personal. Kid. Alright, well then, now we've gotten through the difficult part of the chapter, which is to say, actually making it to Dolt's Keep. We're now in, we've got a firm foothold, and everybody but Dolt is dead. So even if he were to summon, which he didn't, we could kill the extra dragons pretty easily. However, he didn't summon. Prepare to die. I'm like three years younger than you. <laughs> Ow! <laughs> he just grabs up and kicks him in the face. <laughs> Behold I the love skull! That so much. Ah, fuck! <laughs> Did you not like my skull? I know he he has a deeper voice, but every time I see that skull, I just picture he talks like ah, a skull. <laughs> Behold! Oh dear, you're on your own, doll. A box upon you. Impossible. Hold on a sec, that can't happen. I'm Dolph. Apparently I can get even stronger. Neat. Oh cool, we got a dragon scale. Well, I mean, somehow that's the first one, considering all the dragons we've killed, but most of them were rotting, so I guess this one's fresh. Huh? That was amazing! Well, at least somebody can be cheery. <laughs> Atlas, not so much. Atlas is in a bad way. Wait! Antes, he's still alive. I thought he got crit to Helen back. Place alive, the faithful will hunt you down. 
How long will you place the lives of your friends at risk, your highness? You're more clever than that. You should be soloing the game, Princess Antes. Oh, and all the fighting ends. Come to Duma's side. What's wrong with you, lass? Run! Don't be a crazy person, Celica! You can't let him take you! Silence! <laughs> Stop! Leave him alone! Please! I'll do whatever you ask! <laughs> Celica, please have a bit more of a backbone. You can't be folding this easily. May is allergic to toxic gas! Watch out! <laughs> what? Ow! So glad they added in the sound of his body hitting the ground. Hey! What do you think you're doing? Would you so easily cast your life aside? Yeah? I... That's not... My choices are not your matter, sir. Not my matter. You have aided me more than once, and I am grateful for it. Even though I have no idea who you are. How I might spend my life. What could you possibly know about me? Silica, what's going on? It's not like you to act out like this. Nothing is going on, May. Please just leave me alone. <laughs> Everything is fine. None of you can possibly know what I'm feeling. Atlas almost Silica, died in the swamp. That's not fair. That's He's not got true, mud in Silica. his boots. I know. As only a brother can. Gasp! What? Oh, there he is. <laughs> oh, hey, it's child. You... But that's... God, I forgot cold. how different his voices sounded. I don't know how, but... Is it really you? I was certain you were dead. <laughs> I presumed you dead, in fact. Hey, Loka, you can't finally say the thing. Yes, when this guy first showed up, I really wanted to say, unbeknownst to Celica, the Masked Knight is actually her brother Conrad, who did not die in the fire. And I wanted to say that every time he showed up. <laughs> unbeknownst to Celica, Masked Rider X, who is secretly her brother. Just the phrase, unbeknownst to X, is just inherently funny to me, because I've seen every episode of Speed Racer, and oh my god, they say that every episode. <laughs> There was like a stretch, if I remember correctly, where they tried to get away from that, and then they just went back to it. Yeah. I think at first they were trying to, like, vary it up, but then I think they realized, well, if we do it every episode, it becomes like a gag. Mm -hmm. So that's why you wore the mask? Well, it is rather dashing, isn't it? <laughs> you think that thing is... Me? He's Celica's older brother. You know, royalty. Oh, right. Sorry. I'm only used to one living royal anymore. Okay, but now I'm picturing another speed racer scene of Celica just walking up to the mass site. Could it be? Are you my brother Conrad? And he just punches her. Oh, yeah. Yeah, that was dumb. I actually hadn't intended to reveal myself at all. Yeah, you know how you have a thing for uh, sacrificing yourself, Selka? Yeah, I have a thing for uh, just being mysterious. I feel like our home, whole family just likes being angsty bitches in different ways. <laughs> it's genetic. You would not believe how many times Dad said, Oh, woe is me, while he was being fed grapes by hot ladies. One of the grapes had a Black Widow spider on it, and he didn't shut up about it for months. you bear the weight of the world by yourself as Sophia's crown princess. But from this point on, I'd like to share that burden with you. I'll be at your side, and protect you with my life. But you have to promise me something first. Don't ever try to throw your life away like that again. You're right. I'm sorry, Conrad. Okay, well, I'm joining you now. Here I go. Alright, and that's the end of that map, so we'll take a quick look at Conrad, our new Cavalier. Feature me, if you would. Pass me, are you making me work on New Year's? Ugh, what a bitch. Anyway, yes, it's Conrad. 
Conrad is new to Fire Emblem Echoes. If you're following along in Fire Emblem Gaiden for some reason, uh, you won't get Conrad here, which means that your only option for Cavalier in the original game is Atlas. And I have discussed before, no, just, just don't bother. That being said, while Atlas doesn't make a good Cavalier, Conrad here is just really good. He has a pretty good set of base stats, and he's not really a slouch when it comes to his growth rates either. Like, one of his weaker growth rates is a 30% in attack, but like, 30% has been a good attack growth rate before in this game. And considering he starts with 15 attack, it's not as if he won't do damage, it's just he might fall out in the damage department over time. That being said, he will hit, he will hit fast, and he can actually take some damage, which, again, is why Atlas wasn't a good cavalier, because he could not. So, basically, ignoring Reclass, Conrad has a pretty good niche in Celica's party, though considering the terrain effects, it might not always be to his advantage to have a horse. He nonetheless doesn't have much competition, and he is otherwise a really solid unit. Can't really complain about him. Also good to note, he does start with a Blessed Lance. He doesn't have to keep said Blessed Lance if you think that would be good on someone else, but bringing a Blessed Lance into the world in the first place is a good thing, I would say, so let's all thank Conrad for being a pretty solid unit and also having a magical glowing spear that will kill the monsters that we'll be seeing plenty of in the coming maps. And with that, episode's over. You can go home, folks. Next time on Fire Emblem Echoes, which is... This, it's wishes. <laughs>